Hello and welcome to my second video about dynamic algorithms. In this video I want to talk about various techniques that we use to solve dynamic algebraic problems. What this means is a function that can be expressed using a finite number of terms involving only algebraic operations. An example could be polynomial equation where we have an algebraic function in one variable x which is a function y equals f of x. Following the notation and structure of last video, we have some input which is the algebraic case is x0 up to xn minus 1 in some ring. A ring is an algebraic structure used to describe basic arithmetic operations. That could be integers, natural numbers and so on, described by the use of two binary operations, addition and multiplication that maps every pair of elements in our ring to a unique element in our ring. Our output is described in a similar way, with y0 up to yn minus 1. What we want is to support these operations, change, which changes xi to v, and query, which return yi. When we want to describe the complexity of our algorithm in an algebraic problem, we count the arithmetic operations. In an example called prefix sum problem, we are given some input and are to calculate some output, where each index in our output is calculated as x0 plus x1 up to xi. So now we ask, how long will this take? We do n minus 1 operations, meaning n minus 1 additions. Described in big O notation, this is O of n time. In our usual lazy and eager approach, either change or query will compute every input, and the other will be constant work. In example, lazy will take constant time to change the i's input because we don't recalculate until we have to answer a query. When we have to answer our query, it will take us O of n time because we have to recalculate the i's entrance. And of course, the opposite is true for the eager approach. In the last video, we saw how to use a balanced binary tree to speed up our approach of our parenthesis algorithm to order log n time. In this context, we can also construct a balanced binary tree for our calculations. If you are interested in parallelization, this is actually fairly easy to construct using parallel programming. As we see, we would have to use at most log n time to recalculate if we change an input. Now how do we answer query using this tree you might wonder? The idea is to compute everything on the left of our index we want. So in example y4 is the value of x up to x4 added together. So we only have to look up the x0 plus x1 plus x2 plus x3 node and add x4. So we would have to go log n up into the tree. This can be generalized to and applied to parallelization, as the second level of our tree would be called set, so set0 would be equal to x0 plus x1, and so on. Then we would recursively compute the prefix sums, w0, w1, and so on, of the sequences set0, set1, and so on. We can now expand each term in w into two terms of the overall prefix sums. y0 would then be equal to x0, y1 would be equal to w0, y2, w0 plus x2, and so on. In our example to calculate y4, it would be w1 plus x4. In this next example, we'll be looking at evaluating a polynomial. We have some function, namely f of z, which is calculated as shown here a0 plus a1 times z plus a2 times z squared up to a n minus 1 times z to the power of n minus 1. So we want to evaluate f of z on our input x0 up to x n minus 1. To answer our query on f x of 0 will take us 2 n minus 2 operations because we can write the calculation as shown below. So, to find all outputs in y equals f of x0 up to f of xn minus 1 would take us 
order n squared operations. To lower this execution time, we need to do some improvement on the mathematics to resolve this. Now we could write this in another way, where we split the equation up into an even and odd part. To evaluate f of x would mean to evaluate n to the power of n minus 1 polynomials. To evaluate f odd or f even would require n to the power of n half minus 1 polynomials. So this split alone would not give us the reduced problem we are looking for though. We need to select x0 to xn minus 1 in a smart way. We now choose our x0 to xn minus 1 to be the nth root of unity. If this concept is new to you, here's a brief explanation. n equals 2 would be the numbers minus 1 and 1. n equals 4 is minus 1, 1 and the imaginary number i and negative i. n equals 8 would be the sequence where we have omega where omega is the nth root of 1. So by choosing x to be the nth root, you can see from this table the split we would see. From x0 to x3 is identical to x4 to x7 from these roots of unity. Our new function would be to calculate f of omega to the power of i, which is f even of omega to the power of 2i plus omega to the power of i times f odd of omega to the power of 2i. So now we want to answer how many number of operations does it take to compute f1, f omega, f omega squared up to f omega n minus 1. t of n is then equal to 2t of n half plus c times n where c is some constant work that is calculated from the number of arithmetic operations. We don't write big O notation when we have recursive functions. So this will give us O of n log n. This technique is the exact use for fast Fourier transformations. This was a long discussion to get where we actually want to be. The actual method I actually wanted to present to you is called cut value. Using this I will show you how we can create an algorithm that would actually push the execution time of our discrete for year transformation down to O of square root n. So, to create a cut value algorithm, and this is the incremental algorithm, we use a cut in a so-called circuit. This will give us a two subgraph, so we can split to get the input side and the output side. So the basic idea is very simple. When we change some input, we propagate this change as far as the cut goes. When then we have to answer curry, we will take the set of all nodes in the cut, like on the cut point, and propagate the values through to the output. So this second part can be done by starting at a desired output node and following the edges to the cut using a depth first search. The most vital part is to find a cut such that a particular input affects a limited number of nodes in the input side of the circuit. Chang and Tamasai uh, actually made this layered algorithm with lock n plus one level of gates. From the structure of this graph, if we choose a cut at the level of lock n half, we will end up with square root n minus one input affected, and using the same argument in our symmetric graph shows that the same is true for our output. I'm not gonna drag you through the very simple calculation. If you want to see this, go check this out in the article by Reeve and Tate named on dynamic algorithms for algebraic problems. So our execution time using this cut value method has brought us down to O of square root n. The next example is concerning polynomial multiplication. We have two inputs, a from 0 to n minus 1 and b from 0 to n minus 1. Our output is the c from 0 to 2n minus 2. Our defined functions a of z and b of z, where a is calculated at the, as the sum from 0 to n minus 1, a i times z to the power of i, and the same goes for b. This offline algorithm will take order n squared operations. So our lazy and eager approach will give us order n squared in either change or query time. 
We saw before that we can use smart math notation to reduce our problem. The same goes here. For simplicity, we state that n is equal to 2 to the power of k plus 1. a of z we now say is equal to a0 of z plus x to the power of 2 to the power of k times a1 of z. And of course the same goes for b. a0 of z is calculated as a polynomial from a0 to a n half minus 1. c of z is then this equation. Given that we divided this into half polynomial, we actually end up with n times log n. An even faster way of doing this would be to use a technique called global rebuilding. So what we do is that we for each square root n log n change, we begin a new phase. In phase t, which consists of this square root n log n change, we compute output corresponding to the input at the start of phase t and do square root n log n operations per change. So when we have to answer query, we are square root n log n changes behind, so we will of course have to apply these changes on the newest result we have. This next example is somewhat extraordinary, because we show that the simplest implementation is actually the optimal solution. So when we talk about matrix vector multiplication, we have our input m and u, where m is an n times n matrix and u is some n times 1, which is a column vector. Our output is some n times n matrix. So the initial solution we come up with is that for each vj in our output, we compute it as the sum of mjk in our matrix times the case indices of our vector, namely uk. So how fast goes this? Well, in the lazy, we would be able to do some constant work for a change, and O of n for a query, and the opposite for the eager solution. This has actually been proven that we cannot do faster than order n, so the eager or lazy is actually the optimal solution. Thank you for watching this video about algebraic problems and different techniques in dynamic algorithms. If you have any question about this or previous videos or suggestions for future material, please go write a comment or send me an email which will be posted in the video description.